Okay, off they go again. <laughs> Like all these things, share screen. Okay, right back to where we were. Lovely, off we go. So, as I mentioned, I'm a peer support pharmacist and. As such, basically, the peer support pharmacists, they detail what we do here, but ultimately, we're just pharmacists in the community of practice, and we kind of liaise from the community of practice into the IOP, and then share stuff from the IOP out to the community of practice, and just kind of volunteer to um, be part of that conduit of information. Um, so let's kick off. If you have any issues seeing in these videos, can you just turn on your mic and let me know? I'll assume they're working. Otherwise, if I don't hear otherwise, okay? So this is just a quick video on the CPD model for pharmacists um, and the role of the IOP. CPD model for Irish pharmacists. What is CPD? Continuing professional development is a continual process of lifelong learning which is focused on implementing learning in your professional practice and improving outcomes for patients. CPD involves maintaining appropriate experience in the practice of pharmacy, keeping up to date with continuing education and professional competency, and undertaking appropriate development and training opportunities that are relevant to the practice of pharmacy. What is the role of the Irish Institute of Pharmacy? The Irish Institute of Pharmacy, IIOP, was established by the Pharmaceutical Society of Ireland. PSI, to deliver on the statutory requirements relating to CPD for Irish pharmacists. All pharmacists registered with the PSI will be automatically registered with the IIOP. The IIOP is responsible for the IIOP ePortfolio, ePortfolio Review, Practice Review, the provision and accreditation of training programmes. What's the legislative background to CPD? The PSI commissioned a review of international CPD models in 2010. This review informed the CPD rules, SI 553 of 2015 legislation. These rules state that the CPD undertaking shall be systematic, self-directed, needs-based and outcomes-focused, based on a process of continual learning and development with application in his or her professional practice as a pharmacist. What does this mean for pharmacists registered in Ireland? According to the legislation, every pharmacist shall undertake appropriate CPD with the purpose of maintaining a level of competence in their ongoing practice as a pharmacist and with a view to protecting, maintaining and promoting the health and safety of the public. Every pharmacist must undertake regular self-assessment of their learning needs through assessment against the core competency framework for pharmacists. Every pharmacist must use the IIOP ePortfolio to record and maintain their CPD, which shall be accessible through the IIOP website. This ePortfolio is private to and under the absolute control of the pharmacist. How will pharmacists' engagement with CPD be monitored? The IIOP manages two quality assurance processes, as set out in the legislation. These are ePortfolio Review, and practice review. So that is an outline of... Um, We've done oh, it. oh, sorry, it's still going. Okay, now we're good. <laughs> so let's have a look now at the IIOP website. So there's a public-facing element to the website, which is just general information, publications, newsletters, usually flags anything that's coming up. And then within that, there's a members login section, which is a private section of the website into which you can access your own e-portfolio. It's basically the VLE or the virtual learning environment where you'll find any courses you want to, any events that you need to sign up to. Recordings of old webinars are recorded there. Um, there's a help section which has loads of loads of guides and supports to support you. And then if you're called for ePortfolio review, it's it's housed within your um, login section and equally for practice review. So that's where you'll find all the information relating to your CPD. So to access it, you can access it from any web enabled device, so your laptop or your mobile. 
your login basically will be your name dash your PSI number. So for me, Ruth dash one, two, three, four. Um, for example, if that was my PSI number and then you'll have a password. You should have received a password from the PSI in a letter you got originally when you registered with them. If you haven't got that, you can just go to the retrieve section like you can for most passwords and it'll issue you out the new password. If you're having any trouble at all, the team in the IOP are really, really helpful, um, mainly pharmacists inside there as well. So they're really kind and they're more than happy to help anyone. So just drop them a quick email and they'll get back to you. The one thing I would say to you, within your, within your login as a member, there's a section for your own information, your own details. Really important that you um, have your most relevant email address in that. So, for example, if you're a pharmacy student and you were using your, for example, UCC email address, and now you have a work address you need to and you've stopped using your UCC one, you need to upgrade it to your work address. Or if you have a personal one, probably that's the one to use because your work one will probably change a few times and you might forget to um, update it because all communication from the IOP would be via the email you have put into their system. Um, so it's really important that you have the correct email in there. So that's just one thing to flag for you. OK, quick video now on the recording of CPD in your ePortfolio. Any issue with this video, please, someone let me know. IIOP ePortfolio. All pharmacists registered with the Pharmaceutical Society of Ireland have access to their own personal IIOP ePortfolio. The IIOP ePortfolio has been specifically designed to support pharmacists to meet the requirements of the PSI, Continuing Professional Development, CPD legislation. This online tool allows you to plan, record and reflect on all aspects of your CPD. In your ePortfolio, you will be able to create and manage CPD cycles relating to learning which you have undertaken, view statistics and reports on the CPD cycles you have created to date, participate in ePortfolio review, and find step-by-step -step guides, videos, and other support resources. When you create a new CPD cycle, you will be guided through a five-stage reflective process for recording your learning. Self-appraisal. In this stage of the cycle, you state how you identify the learning area the CPD cycle relates to. Develop a personal plan. This is where you outline your plan to address the learning area you have identified. Action. In this stage, you document what actions you took to address the learning area you identified. Document your learning. This stage is where you document what you have learned during and as a result of the learning activity. Evaluate impact on practice. In this stage of the cycle, you reflect on the learning area you identified and evaluate what you have learned about yourself and your practice as a result of the learning. One of the benefits of the IIOP CPD model is that it has the flexibility to accommodate all learning types. Your learning may include formal learning such as educational activities which have been certified or accredited by an institution or accrediting body. For example, training programmes accredited by the IIOP. Learning which is structured but not accredited. This includes educational activities which have not undergone a formal accreditation process. For example, training programmes organised by an employer. On-the-job learning is informal learning from unplanned or unstructured events. For example, learning from incidents, near misses and adverse events that have occurred. Each year, the Pharmaceutical Society of Ireland, PSI, randomly selects the names of a number of pharmacists from the register to participate in ePortfolio review. All pharmacists, three or more years qualified, can expect to be selected for ePortfolio review once in every five-year period. Support resources and information specific to the ePortfolio review process are available to the selected pharmacists. Visit www.iiop.ie for more details. Right. 
So I suppose that's given us in, in an insight into the legislative side of what um, happens with CPD. But I suppose as pharmacists, I suppose we're all expected under the legislation. We have to do the CPD, but ultimately from a patient perspective, it's really important if you're in patient facing roles that we're continuing to develop our confidence. As pharmacists ourselves, obviously we all want to be the best pharmacists that we can be. So we want to stay professionally up to date. We want to remain confident and if nothing else, develop confidence maybe in new areas to support our own career progression in the years to come. And I suppose ultimately, if we get to a stage of advanced practice here in Ireland, we want to be set up and ready and in that space. So by developing our competencies, we'll be, in, we'll be prepared and ready as we reflect on our gaps in our knowledge and, and improve those. And I guess, you know, pharmacists are one of the most trust, trusted professions by the public. And it's really supporting that and demonstrating our, our engagement with confidence is really crucial to supporting that um, positive uh, view that the public have of, of us as pharmacists. So our ePortfolio is um, set up in line with the PSI's core competency framework. And it's really based on reflective practice. Um, and the idea being that we reflect over our um, different stages of the cycle. So for our IOP one, there's five different stages. The idea is that you reflect through each stage of the cycle. And that refle reflection helps you identify your learning needs and supports your um, development as a professional and as a pharmacist. There are lots and lots of guides inside in the IOP website to guide you through this if you have any questions. But I'll give you a quick overview of how you do it. So the first stage when you log into your portfolio is self-appraisal. And the idea is here, you know, just say something happens in work today and you go, gosh, I really need to close that gap there. I, I, I'm not as skillful or knowledgeable or having the level of confidence I'd, I'd like to have in that area. So basically you identify your learning needs. You, something comes up and it flags something to you. So what you do there is you just simply record um, how you identified your learning needs. Just, you reflect back on it and what triggered you to think, gosh, I need to close the gap here in my knowledge. And then I suppose you think about what am I going to do to acquire that knowledge? Am I going to go to a course? Am I going to read some journals? Am I going to watch some YouTube videos? Am I going to dial into some webinars? Am I going to have a chat with a colleague? What's going to support me to um, get that learning? Now, like as old in life, we can set up with a great plan <laughs> of what I'm going to do. And maybe you had three things on your plan and you end up doing two of them. And two might be all you need. Like you might have identified your learning within the two. So there's that reality of what I planned to do and then what I actually did. And that's what that stage is, the actions I uh, actually ended up doing versus what I thought I might do. Um, and for the reason for that, I suppose, is you might find that you have a tendency to go to a certain type of learning and that's the one that works for you so it's handy to record it so you suddenly go actually you know reading journals that, that actually works for me and, and maybe that's the way I'll, I'll um, engage in my learning then I suppose you reflect on what you were, you uh, learned so you know you could attend a course like tonight but there might be just one or two things out of it that are key to you and the rest you kind of knew already so it's not really new learnings so you might just record here the new things that you learned that were relevant to you that supported your learning. Or some people like to write out everything they learned. So it could just be bullet points, one or two things I learned that were new for me, or it could be a whole essay where some pharmacists like to record all their information so they can refer back to it subsequently to kind of revise. And then probably what I would feel is the most important part is the impact on your practice. So Knowledge for the sake of knowledge is still just knowledge, but taking knowledge and changing your behavior or changing how you engage with the patient or changing how you engage with a colleague or changing some element of your practice, that's where the impact is found. So that's where you're applying the knowledge into practice. And that's what's driving you forward in your career as a pharmacist and in your professional development. So for me, that's probably the most important thing. So I learned these two things. I changed these other things because of that and that's the impact on my practice so for us in ireland i suppose we're very lucky with our cpd system because it's it's really broad and it enables us to include any type of learning like we can have learning from just having a conversation with a colleague patient walks in has some kind of skin condition you've never seen it before your colleague pharmacist comes out and goes oh that's measles and you go ah now I know what measles looks like in real life. So you've learned something and that is a perfectly valid 
CPD cycle for you because it's personal to you. You've learned something new that you didn't know before and you can reflect on that and, and rewrite your cycle. So there's no set way to acquire knowledge. Everything is available to you. So the CPD cycle in Ireland does not require that we attend X number of courses, that we acquire X number of CPD points like many other professions. It's really left to us as an individual to work out the mechanism for CPD that works best for me. And the goal here is reflection. So really what they're looking at is reflect your practice that you're just, and that just means I thought about it. It doesn't mean anything more fancy than that. I just give it five minutes thought. I look back over it. I thought about it. And this is my conclusion. Um, and therefore everything falls into that category. So really, when we're looking at reflection, we're looking at, you know, how am I now? You know, where is my knowledge at? Where are the gaps in my knowledge? What do I do need to do to get more skill in a particular area, you know, more confidence, more knowledge? Um, and then we think about and reflect on what we're going to do about it. And by doing that, it just gives us that kind of kick, that, that focus, that purpose to engage and say, right, I'm going to get on with that now and close that knowledge gap that I have or that skills gap that I have. And then I suppose by looking at what we plan to do and then what we actually ended up doing is a useful activity to identify that maybe I didn't need to do loads of things. Maybe one thing was enough for me or two things are enough. And that's, that's sufficient for me to close the knowledge gap that I was looking for. And then ultimately, again, looking back and saying, now that I have that piece of information, that knowledge, that skill, what am I doing differently because of it? Because I just got the knowledge and I didn't change anything. Then it's just knowledge for the sake of knowledge. It's not knowledge that I'm applying and changing in my practice to drive me forward as a pharmacist. So ultimately, when it comes to your e-portfolio, it is what you make of it. If it's just a tick box exercise where you go in, you fill in a few cycles so you can submit for e-portfolio route, that's all it's all ever going to be for you. But if you use it as, as it's intended, which is to guide your personal development and guide your journey as a pharmacist, where you take 10 minutes to reflect on something and identify what I could do better next time and write it up in your in your e-portfolio. And I suppose the idea of having the e-portfolio it's just to put it down on paper. You have somewhere to capture it because, you know, you might think about it driving home in the car, but having the five steps in the cycle drives you to a level of conclusion. It's not just a, God, you know, that happened today. And then it goes out of your mind by the time you get home and start making the dinner. It's that you actually sat down and put pen to paper per se and actually got it out of your head and said, right, I'm actually going to do something about this. So if you really engage with your e-portfolio and utilize it, it will really support you as a pharmacist to grow and develop um, as you go along in your career. There's no right way and no wrong way of doing e-portfolio. It's completely personal to you. Nobody else can see it. Nobody else can access it. If you are called for e-portfolio review, you only have to submit usually about six cycles out of whatever is in your cache of cycles. Um, and, and they have to meet certain criteria, which the system will tell you. And that's usually like when you wrote it, link in the ccf that's another talk you can <laughs> go to that one um but a lot of people are like well how do i know if i'm doing it well you're doing it well if you're writing something into it that's the whole point it's personal to you it doesn't have to be any particular format personally i'm a bullet point person mine are really bang 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 i only ever go to any program and look for one thing i will do because i think any more than that i will fail so i always pick one thing i'm going to change this one thing that's going to have an impact on my practice and that's all i do but that's that's personal to me um, so basically to, to take from it that there's no right or wrong way, but have a chat with your colleagues, see how they do it, maybe get some insights from that if you're, if you're looking for a little bit of further guidance. So I'm going to jump onto the IIOP website. Now, I think if I click on this, I'm assuming you won't be able to see where I go. Oh, you can, can you? You can. Okay. Can you see that okay? Can you give me a thumbs up? Yes, excellent. Okay, so this, thank you. This is the general um, website. So um, e-portfolio review is going on at the moment. So there'll be people co uh, look, coming up for that. It's webinar season at the moment. So they have lots of information on that. Uh, these things are coming up. So these are events. So one is they're running a uh, Myers-Briggs um, MBTI, if you've heard of it, in Limerick. It's a really amazing workshop. It costs you about two or three hundred euros if you're actually to pay for this. It's one of those kind of analysis of your skills. Um, but the IP are running it uh, for pharmacists. So if it's something you're interested in, I would highly recommend it. 
these are some webinars that have happened already. So that's the recordings of them. So you can log into those and watch those. These are things that are coming up. Um, there's a mentorship program coming up. So if you're a pharmacist who's further along in your career, you might be interested in being a mentor. Or if you're a pharmacist who's earlier in your career, you might like to be a mentee and get the support of a more experienced pharmacist. Um, I would highly, highly recommend that. I think as pharmacists, we need to lean in on each other a little bit more um, to, to guide ourselves. Okay, and then uh, we can uh, log in. So this is where you log in, members log in here. There's my password, so just my name and my rego number and then my password. And it brings me into the main screen here, basically, which would be a person screen. Now your heads are in my way, so I just have to move you out of the way. So over here, we have um, my courses that I'm doing, my e-portfolio, my profile that I mentioned where you can edit and update your personal details. And then if you're called for practice review, um, they have lots of information here on the resource hub with additional uh, uh, training, more on the mentoring program. Sorry, um, we can't see the website, apologies. Oh, no worries. I didn't think. Okay, let me see. Oh, maybe when I, uh, hang on now. Thank you for letting me know. I'll have a, another go off it and see. Oh, hang on. There's something in the chat now that I've come out. Uh, I can't see it now. I'm just seeing. Okay, great. I'll I'll go to screen share and we'll get you back in. There, where do I have it? Here we go. Thank you for letting me know. Right. Can we see this now? All good. Excellent. Okay. So I just logged in on my password and now I'm in here in this section. So these are all the courses you might have signed up for your e-portfolio review. Um plenty of information courses etc that are coming up along the top okay so i'm just going to click into the, my e-portfolio review so you can just have a quick there's an intro that there this is where you manage your cycles you have your open cycles completed cycles abandoned cycles um it's give you some stats there on your progress if you're called for e-portfolio review it comes up here and this kind of goes pink i think it is so i've been called twice for e-portfolio review so you can see that there um, uh, in the beginning, I put the first time around, didn't really know it, put in loads of cycles. Second time, I learned that you only need to put in six cycles. <laughs> I only put in six cycles. Um, and then like they give you your, your certificate. I don't know if this will show up now or not. Anyway, that's just my certificate that came up. Uh, do, do. So that's all you get. And then there's the resource section, which has loads and loads. And they're really interactive, actually. They're really good little um, supports. So how to create your CPD cycle would be the one that's most relevant for you at the moment. Intro to um, ePortfolio. And then if you get called for ePortfolio, there's a whole section there on it to support you. OK, I'll go back now to the presentation. OK. Hopefully you can see that okay. And we're back. Right. So um oh god, I'm gonna pop back out again. Uh let me know if this if you can see this or not now. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. Can you see my screen? I've just gone to screen share. Um so these are all the different newsletters that the IOP sends out every month. Um, inside in those, they have a um, lots of CPD cycles that you can log into and have a look at as well. So those can be very useful to have a look at. So there's plenty of information in those each month that you can utilize as well. So you can catch those on the, um, the website and have a look at them. OK, so next we're just going to look at the quality assurance of the ePortfolio review and the practice review. So your e-portfolio review, if you haven't been called for it yet, which none of you have, um, you get called once every five years. OK, if you're a newly qualified pharmacist, you're exempt for the first three years and then you'll be called once every five years after that. It's the PSI who selects um, who's going to be called for e-portfolio review. So you'll get an email from them usually during the summer to notify you've been called. They then pass that list onto the IIOP and the IIOP will email you in the autumn and commence you on the journey of that process. So once again, that's why it's really important that your email is up to, up to um, speed and correct. The standards that are set that you're measured against are set by other pharmacists, okay? So they're not some um, crazy standards that none of us can achieve. It's pharmacists like yourself and myself who go, we would expect the basically competent pharmacists to do at a minimum these things. Um, and that's where the standards come from. 
If you need support or resources, you'll find them, as I showed you a moment ago, in the ePortfolio, um, in the resources section within your ePortfolio. So you'll find them there. Now, the next thing we have is practice review. So practice review is um, another assessment that you will get called for. And I'm going to play this video now and you'll be able to find a little bit more about practice review. What is practice review? The Pharmaceutical Society of Ireland, CPD Rules, SI 553 of 2015, require that a sample of the patient-facing pharmacists on the PSI register be selected annually for a practice review. According to these rules, this review will encompass a direct evaluation of the knowledge, skills and judgment of the pharmacist against a standard established in consultation with peer pharmacists practicing in patient-facing roles having regard to the core competency framework for pharmacists, with particular reference to those competencies dealing with patient care, including clinical knowledge, the ability to gather and interpret appropriately information from and about patients, patient management and education, and communication, including counselling skills. How are pharmacists selected for practice review? All pharmacists practicing in patient-facing roles are eligible to be selected for practice review. Each year, the Pharmaceutical Society of Ireland, PSI, randomly selects a sample of pharmacists from the register. Pharmacists will be notified of their selection for practice review approximately six months in advance of a practice review event. Once the selection process is complete, the PSI provides the IIOP with a list of the selected pharmacists. The IIOP facilitates the practice review process. What is involved in practice review? The practice review is a face-to-face -face event which takes place in Dublin and comprises of two separate components. The first component is the standardised pharmacy interactions. In this component, pharmacists are required to undertake a series of standardised pharmacy interactions, SPIs which are designed to be reflective of situations with which pharmacists practicing in patient-facing roles will be expected to be capable of dealing, such as counselling a patient on a medication or dealing with an inquiry from a healthcare professional. These interactions are designed, developed and reviewed by peer pharmacists practicing in patient-facing roles. In this component, each pharmacist will be allocated their own consultation room. They will be reviewed on the following three competency areas. Gathering information, the ability to gather and interpret appropriately information from and about patients. Patient management and education. Communication, including counselling skills. The second component of practice review is the clinical knowledge review. This component is an open book online assessment which reviews the competency area of clinical knowledge. Pharmacists are presented with 18 patient cases and are required to answer three multiple choice questions, MCQs, on each case. All cases and corresponding MCQs are developed and reviewed by peer pharmacists practicing in patient facing roles. What happens after the practice review event? Approximately two months after undertaking practice review, each pharmacist will receive a feedback report which details their outcome of practice review. This report will show how they performed in each of the four competency areas in comparison to the average result for all pharmacists who have undertaken the same practice review. This allows each pharmacist to identify their areas of strength and areas for potential further development. For more information, please check out the practice review support resources on our website or get in contact with us by phone or email. Great. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I probably will lose you now. So someone turn on the camera if, because I can't see the chat box um, if this goes off. That's another YouTube video. Can you see that? Yeah. 
Can you see that one okay, yeah? No. Nope. nope. Just, just the address, just the YouTube address. Okay. Thank you. Is there that? Oh, I know. I need to follow this. Thank you. Let me come out again and I'll stop share. Um, share screen. Okay, so this is an example of an interaction. He's my grandson. Yeah. Grandson. Yeah. He's 19 to be nice. Well, he got an insect bite yesterday, and um, it's quite um, red and hot. And so I brought him to the GP this morning, and um, he suggested that he should go on an antibiotic because sometimes these things can get infected. Sorry, I wonder if you can turn up the sound a little, please. I, I can't make it go any louder. Well, he has had it was like that, I need to see it. They've ended already. Okay, that's the end of that. <laughs> I think it was just to give us a taster of, of what that looks like. So in college, we do OSCE exams with the students. It's basically the idea of uh, you would be uh, the pharmacist and an uh, actor would be a patient and they would come in and you get like the basics of a scenario and you'd have to chat through it with the patient. Um, and that's the idea behind that. So just to give you a feel for it. Now, let me just do my screen share again. Right. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. A lot of hopping in and out in this presentation. Right. Uh, and this is the other other element of it, um, whereby they give you a scenario and you read through the scenario and then they'll have a few questions associated with the scenario. So I'll let you quickly read that there now. You can see the kind of questions you get asked. So they're very much everyday things. Um, I haven't actually been called for practice review myself, but one of my colleagues inside the school was called this year and he said it was actually fine. He said, I think we, we dread it <laughs> more than it actually is. It's everyday stuff. It's nothing overly tricky. You have resources with you. So you'd have the BNF with you to help you answer. You're not expected to know it off the top of your head. All they're assessing is that you're a minimally competent pharmacist. You'd know where to get the information if you didn't know where to find it. Um, but they're not overly tricky. Most of it you'd know off the top of your head and some of it you might just double check just because it's a test. <laughs> okay, so um, from there, let's have a look at some signposts for support for you. So as I showed you on the website already, um, they have loads of little interactive guides in the support section and lots of videos. They're really easy. It takes 10 minutes to have a quick look at them. They will give you peace of mind that you're on the right track. So it's worth kind of taking the five minutes to have a look at it. If you're having any issues with the website or accessing or you have just any general questions that crop up, drop the guys an email, info.iop.ie. They're really helpful um, and they'll guide you in any way, shape or form that they can. And I suppose ultimately, if you're if you're concerned about your CPD or you're wondering what do I need to be doing, you know, ask your colleagues, you know, you're working with pharmacists all the time. They may have been called. They might guide you through it. Um, ask if you are a recent graduate, any of your colleagues uh, who graduate with you in your peer group, they might be able to support you. Um, at this stage, uh, every pharmacist in the country who's been on the register for um, longer than yourselves um, has generally been called at this stage. Um, so there'll be plenty of pharmacists out there. I've been called twice. My sister's been called three times, I think somehow. Um, so uh, we've all been called. So we've got some insight into it. So most of the pharmacists you'll be working with should be able to give you some guidance and support. So what from here? Hop on to the IOP website, get your username up. So you saw mine was root dash and then whatever your own PSI number is. If you can't find your password, just go to the retrieve a password section. It'll guide you through it. Any issues, get in touch with the IOP. Go in, have a play with this. Like all websites, you can't break it. Um, have a go of starting your own cycle. 
it just says plus for a new cycle. There are more videos inside in the help section if you're not sure how to start a cycle. Do a really simple one. Maybe do one on this session tonight. If there's one thing you took away from tonight, you could write that up just to get yourself um up and running for it. Um, Ask for help. There's lots of us out there. This is relatively new for every pharmacist in the country. Uh, so we're all found a little bit. I know I got called the first year. I nearly lost my life. I was like, oh, my Lord, great. I have to be one of the test dummies. Nobody to ask, nobody to help me. But it was actually fine. Hence why I submitted 10 cycles. <laughs> it's like, just throw the, throw the book on and make sure I get through. And then I realized afterwards, six was plenty. And, and it, if you do get called call for review, there's loads of webinars, but they actually have one of those foolproof systems on it, whereby it gives you like green lights and red lights. So if you get all green lights, you're fine. You're good to go. Um, And and, and that makes it very easy. So there's nobody trying to catch anybody out, which is, I think, the peace of mind we all want. It's, it's not a competition. It's there for your own personal personal development you know very few people ever have an issue with their cpd um everyone gets through it relatively fine so look that's just a run through what we've covered tonight just to remind yourselves of it um thank you all for dialing in i'll stop sharing now uh if you are free to go if you oh hang on i'm for stop sharing uh if you have all the information you want if you have any questions i'm more than happy to hold on the line for a few minutes and answer any questions anybody would have um otherwise i would say thank you all and good evening and thanks for dialing in thank you thanks a million guys Good night. Thanks for your thanks. <laughs>